Hey everyone, this is Nicole Crocker. Welcome to another episode of San Diego Spotlight, where we introduce one local small business to you every week. Let's go see who we meet today. So here I am with Dana and her closet is absolutely amazing. I need to redo my closet. She's gonna be coming to my house after this to help me organize my space because it's awful. I know that she's not very good at organization either and that's why she remodeled her space. But let's have her show us some of the really cool stuff that she's got in her, in her nice closet. I would love to do that. I'm excited to show you. You know, most people ask me, you know, every day is a customized closet really important isn't that just a luxury i thought so and i always want people to know it is we can do a really functional closet at a very low level and but then there are also you know we can add the fabulous whether it's lighting or color or drawer fronts and de decor but really functional closets are a must especially in our day and age when we work, we all are going at a breakneck pace. And is it, wouldn't it be nice to walk into your closet and know exactly where everything is all the time? I don't know if that would ever happen. <laughs> I can tell you because of somebody who that did not happen, that was not my life. My life before was one rod all the way across and everything was just kind of put everywhere and I didn't have anything grouped because I didn't have the functionality of a grouped closet, a custom closet. Wait, are you saying that this used to be just that one long closet like you see in every other house? It, it was, Jeez. yes. It was just a bar and a bar and a bar, wow. you know? And and it was very simple. There, I had one section of long hang, but it was not user friendly at all, which is most closet. Most closets, the builder puts in what is basic and moves on. And you're left trying to figure out what to do. And this, custom closet will help even the most disorganized get organized. Awesome. It's I'm really excited exciting. to see what you've got because you've got so many features in here that I've never even heard of before. Yeah. I think that we're going to, as you take the tour today, you'll begin to see that a closet for yourself can come to life in a very quick manner. You know, the nice thing about my niche business is that, you know, we're only in your house, depending on the size of your closet, maybe one to five days. You know, this closet build right here because of lighting would take about three days, but a standard closet only takes a day or two. Okay. And so we're really, our footprint is very small in your home, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. And, and then you have a dynamic project when you're done, a real tr true transformation because then the process is put everything back in and you get to have fun doing it. So, and how does that work? Like, where do you start? <laughs> Basically, when I come into the clock, when I come into the home, you know, everybody always wants to sit at the dining table and I don't own that kind of a business. I'm like, let's go to the space because once I get to the space, I'm going to be able to assess immediately the needs. I begin asking questions. You know, I have my current closets actually within my master bedroom. And so I love the fact that I have master bathroom. I love the fact that I can come and go and I can go from the shower right in here, drop my laundry, you know, unmentionables are in here, all of that lingerie. And so that those are the things I'm looking for for a client. Okay. You know, do they have a master bath connected to their master closet? Because are they running all the way into a master bedroom to grab their underwear, you know, and running past all these windows? I did that a couple days ago. Exactly. <laughs> And that is the standard. And so it's nice to put drawers, a bank of drawers. An island is not very, um, not normal. I don't do a lot of islands because I can usually build out drawers along the walls. So this is all your product right here too. It is, okay. exactly. Not the countertop, we have that custom made, but the, all of this is all of ours. Okay. And so basically what I do is I come in, I measure, and believe it or not, I actually measure shirts, shirt size, shirt width. Really? You know, I measure length of clothing when it's long hang. I count all the shoes. And oftentimes I call myself a closet ninja because I go in <laughs> and, you know, nothing's organized. And I mean, they may have a pair of shoes over here and a pair of shoes over here and a long dress here and a long dress there. And so I am able to start calculating in my head, okay, that looks about two feet of long hang. That looks about, you know, five feet of, you know, short shirts, that type of thing. I'm getting anxiety thinking of you coming into my closet and it's got crud, crud everywhere. 
So totally do you have normal. people like stack it or anything, or you just say leave it and they'll leave come it. in and okay. leave it? Because the the more unorganized it is, the more I know that you need organization. And I mean, I've even come in where things are everything's on the floor. I I literally did one closet, and I know this client would not mind me sharing because she was a hot mess. I went in <laughs> and I, she had a nook in the back that I had to measure. She had a pile of clothing with her cat sitting on the top that I had to maneuver to get to that back nook. So oh, that's great. Everybody just kind of leaves their closet the way it is. And then I get in with a laser because I got a laser measure and I can shoot from wall to wall. And that always helps. Okay. And then at that point, that's when I begin the process of looking at what your needs are asking. Are you going to purge any of this? Is everything staying? Most of the time it's not. So then I can kind of begin to calculate what is coming back in and what will leave. And, and make sure that you have a space for that. Are you helping with interior design too? Like fashion? Um, you know, <laughs> uh, you don't want my fashion sense and you don't want my organization skills. I always tell everybody that, you know, they'll like, can you help me organize it after? Nope, because <laughs> I don't know how to organize myself. Other than if I provide a system, it goes right back in there and it works. So let's talk about the system. Perfect. Show us some of the cool stuff that you've got. I will. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to take this down and we'll come back to this in a minute. But my most favorite accessory is the pant rack. Um, I have two pant racks and on each pant rack it holds 24 pairs of pants Holy. here. And we've got different sizes. We've got an 18 inch one that holds 12. We've got a 24 inch one that holds 18 and, and then, you know, 24 for 30. And this is my favorite because I'm a pants wearer and I highly recommend it because look, take that little pant off and look at how short the hanger is. No wasted space. Yeah, that's great. And and the fact that it pulls out. I love that. Yes, is my <laughs> favorite. And then it just all tucks back in and you got to tuck in your, you know, certain things. But it's really a fun accessory. And I, to be honest with you, I definitely feel like it's a want. But the, now that I have them, I incorporate them into most closets because they're just, you know, you can get a triple, instead of a double hang, I can do a triple hang with pants. And especially when I find cl clients who have 25 pairs of jeans, mm -hmm. you know, this is a great, I even have my workout pants in here. Everything is in here. So oh, definitely yeah. a go-to um, must have. And then of course I've got cubbies. We all need cubbies for purse storage, for my husband's got hat storage. And there's just so many things that we need cubbies for. And I always incorporate cubbies in, in some way, shape or form. Um, okay. my, one of my favorites is the valet rod. As I took that purse, I had this purse hanging on here. You know, I do a lot of staging. I'm, I, I am an iron. I still iron my clothing. Yes, I am not, um, I am way old. Wait, have I, you seen I, the steamers? The steamers are really cool. I know, I've even thought about them, <laughs> but I really, there's something about ironing my clothes that I really still enjoy. And I iron almost every day, and I'll show you that little tidbit in a few minutes. But I love to, once I've ironed, I stage all my clothes on my valet rod. And for the day, like, oh, and if I'm perfect. traveling, I will literally use that valet rod and stack clothes on it for travel so that I know that I have enough clothing before throwing it all into the suitcase. And I, this is a must. This is not an, this is not a, I want, this is a must. And they're not very expensive, you know, 50 bucks for a valet rod. So totally yeah. doable. I actually have one of those in my closet and I didn't know what it was. <laughs> so now you can use it because these are the best. I yeah. mean, they really are. They're so functional. They're definitely part of a functional closet. You know, the, the other thing that I love about organized custom closets is that I created quadrants in mine and I have a work clothing because, you know, I've got my my clothing with my my work name on it. I've got a work clothing, I've got short sleeve, I've got long sleeve, I have sweatshirts, I have jackets, I have sweaters. And and I love that because when I take my laundry out and come up here and put, start folding on top here. Oh, this is perfect space for that. Perfect, everything goes back in its proper quadrant. And for me, now this makes somebody sense. who's, yes. <laughs> Right, and and the other thing is keeping this clean mm -hmm. because I get a little buggy when things start going crazy up here and change and wallets and stuff like that. And we have drop zones for all of that for my husband because like he does like drop, to drop zones. That's one of my favorite things is the drop zone. I'm gonna put this back up here. So and then kind of moving. I don't know if we want to just kind of shift around. Oh, let me talk to you real quick about the hamper. So the hamper. Let's not look at my dirty clothes. Um, <laughs> it's a pullout bag. And it's not just a pullout, you know, feel this. 
it is a really oh, that's thick, really thick. canvas. Yeah. And you know, it's not gonna rip. And I've had this for several years now. Mm -hmm. And it is, I mean, it's an amazing, and it just pulls out, take it straight down to the laundry, dump it in, bring it back. Well, and even, I know my husband gets um, clothes laundered. He could put his red bag inside of that and just take it right 100%. out. 100%. We've got, you know, I'm one of those people with all the dirty clothes in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I generally find when I walk into a walk-in closet. I'll find like a, either a lump of clothes or a, a plastic basket. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just not pretty no matter what. And yeah. this keeps it completely hidden. And I'll show you when we get to my husband's side, I'll show you his hamper system because his is different than mine. I've got drawers and hamper here, and then he's got all drawers on his side. Um, and we decided to incorporate a totally different type of hamper, but. Well, be honest, do the men really get involved? Or are the, are the women kind of saying, this is my husband's space, this is his information because he doesn't want to come and talk to you about organizing a closet? Great question. What's really strange is mm -hmm. it is either the man or the woman, but generally not both. Makes sense. My husband's is like perfect, perfectly clean, perfectly yep. organized, mine's chaos. Yep. And at, oh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that. And mm -hmm. sometimes the woman will ask, or the man, believe it or not, will ask, is there any way that you can build a partition between if it's a big enough closet so that it's truly a his and hers and I don't have to see hers and <laughs> we have done that, that many times <laughs> many times because we can do things back to back and it completely separates it so it, as long as there are you know doors for each but yeah there's to so many things that men definitely get involved in their closet they it's become really a, a kind of a favorite place it m my husband and I love it in here it really is our safe zone it's I do a lot of shooting in here because of my business and we both really love the organized feel. Yeah. The rest of our house might not be so organized, but this place is definitely organized. Uh, I see some stuff over here that you haven't shown me yet. I haven't, yeah. So I have a, I have a, a scarf rack, which is really nice because it's just got, it only can handle smaller scarves, the thinner versions, you know? Okay. You can't really do a thick scarf that is more of a sweatery scarf mm -hmm. because the, the, the scarf, um, hanger holes are just a little bit too small, but they're really nice because they just kind of pull through mm -hmm. and you know, and then you just push them right back in again. And then I put two scarf racks in, the but thing I rolls actually out. Did you guys use... see that? Did you capture that? Good. That thing rolls out. That is so cool. And this is, I use all my necklaces because I can't stand necklaces in a jewelry drawer mm -hmm. um, because they all tangle. So this keeps me from having tangled necklaces. And you can actually do that on a tie rack, but I have two, I put two scarf racks in, so I use that as my, just, you know, use that so as So both my, of those actually pulled out. Both of them okay. do. Mm -hmm, they sure do. Does yep. every rack pull out? Um, almost, none of these, none of the actual hanging racks okay. do. Those are all fixed. But, you know, we do have a lot of actual racking that does pull out so that it's easy user friendly. Okay. And then these partitions, I see that you've got hat racks in different formats so you can make those all customizable You do too. and I do, I brought these in just recently and actually I found these on Amazon. One of the things I love is I have a lot of people that love to fold clothing and put their shirts and their jeans and instead of having, I have a lot of people that would prefer to fold. I've got sweaters that I have to have folded. Exactly yeah. and you know when you put it on a shelf and the shelf is 24 inches mm -hmm. wide and it all falls over and it all looks flip floppy, yeah. this keeps everything nice and neat. And okay. those are kind of my, we've just added those. I've been kind of playing around with incorporating those into some of my client closets. Awesome. Yeah, so. All right, what else do we have behind you? Well, the next thing we have is what we call my shoe shelving. Now, this is an interesting because I have the slanted shoe shelves and they, they actually have the rail on them, a decorative rail. But the thing about it is, is that slanted shoe shelves are really a waste of space because the minute you slant them, you lose about six inches of usable space. And these are fixed. Oh, that makes sense. They now don't that you move. Say that. We can't adjust them. Mm -hmm. They're a certain height for a reason for high heel shoes. I love these when you have a display, if you have display shoes. I did it because I don't have a ton of shoes. If I go into a closet and I count more than 50 shoes, I'm going to do layered adjustable shelves that are about five to six inches because okay. most shoes are not very high and then that way i can get as many pair of shoes on the shelf as possible 
Um, and my husband and I both did. We decided to do because neither of us actually we don't oh, really they can't wear see over here. You've got the static ones that are flat over here. Yes, yeah, okay. I do. And we've got just a few here, and then we actually have a downstairs closet because we don't wear shoes in the house. My husband and I grew up in Hawaii, and in Hawaii you don't wear shoes in the house. Mm -hmm. And so we just you know we these are just for we we pull these off the shelf and go downstairs and put them on. And so most of our shoes are actually downstairs in a closet. So my heels would be actually shaped properly because they're not being shoved in the back if I had this nice. Exactly, <laughs> it's really Perfect. nice. It is really a nice feature. And it's fun just to be able to see because when you look at the shelf, you can actually see it. Mm -hmm. You know, you see your shoes right away. You know exactly which pair. I could stand all the way out there and know which shoes I'm gonna grab, so. Now that we're on my husband's side, you know, the husband's side of the closet is generally the smaller side of the closet. Yes. You know, mine was quite large and his is quite short. But I will tell you that I have done enough closets lately where the man actually has asked for more room than the woman. No kidding. So it's, it's flipping. Guys are getting really into clothes. You know, we've got all these clothes delivery companies, Trunk Club and Stitch Fix. And, and I have both of those. <laughs> and I have Stitch Fix and, and my husband does the Trunk Club. And so he's now adding and I'm like, oh no, what are we gonna do? We need to add to your closet. But you know, I, my, my deal with those is if something comes in, something has to leave. That's the only way that I can stay organized. So I actually got a Stitch Fix box yesterday and I have it on my agenda this weekend to pull out exactly what came in. Ah. So that, you know, whatever's in there doesn't gets replaced. I have this allotment of hangers. I wish my mom would have taught me that trick when I was supposed to like figure out how to do a wardrobe. <laughs> you know, it this is um, a husband's side of the closet and we did things a little bit different. You know, on your side, I mentioned that we have a hamper, a pullout hamper. On his side, we have a more masculine pullout. Oh, hamper. that's cool. And this one has an actual colored bag to it, mm -hmm. uh, like a tweed colored bag. And it comes in a Same. gray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very nice, very, you know, high end. Um, and it's definitely a little bit more expensive than the one that I just had on the other side. Okay. We just decided he didn't really want one closed in. I have people that don't want their clothing, their laundry enclosed because they feel smell. Mm -hmm. If they're workout kings or, you know, in yeah. some type of a trade that gives them sweaty clothing. Mm -hmm. So they don't want it. And he did not want his clothes behind a closed door. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did this. And then you have a fancy bag, a pretty bag. Yeah. And the other thing is, this I is my favorite thing that you told I me about. I mentioned that we love to iron, and so we have an ironing board. And what I love about the ironing board is it pivots this way, it pivots straight, and then it comes this direction. And uh, you know, like I said, I iron. You have to have an outlet in your closet in order to have good point. An iron, and so oftentimes there are no outlets in closets and I'll go in and somebody will say, oh, I got to have an ironing board and it requires an electrician and then there's an additional cost, right? So it is something to think about, but it is nice to have everything right here, housed right here yeah. when I want to iron and not have to run down to the laundry room. Um, I mentioned a drop zone. Yes, I've never I heard of that. I have not, this is real life drop zone. My husband was like, he's got his craft board in here and you know, all kinds of fun stuff in here. And this is where he comes in and drops his wallet his keys, his change, and then he goes through it like once a month and sh straightens it all out. It looks like it's time to go through it again. My husband has a little bowl in our closet. I thought he was the only weirdo that did that. That's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> he would love that. It's such a nice drop yeah. zone for a guy because, you know, we keep all of our stuff in a purse yeah. and they've got their po pockets full. So, and then of course we've got a little hat storage. We've got so many different ideas for hat storage. He doesn't have a ton of hats, mm -hmm. um, but I've actually incorporated in hanging hanging hats where I've done multiple, you know, rods with these little clips and hanging hats because so some people have so many ball caps. So yes. there's so many options for ball caps. And then of course we've got some shelving that we can do clothing if you want to style, you know, whatever you want to do. And then of course double hang here. Now I just have to say one thing. You know, I've been showing you guys, this is a tip. This is a tip for everybody that I have all black velvet hangers. Okay. I'm telling you, if, if something else pops into this closet, I will see it right away and kind of freak out a little bit. Remember the book, <laughs> Mommy Dearest? She was a freak about oh. um, hangers. I am now a freak about hangers because when you're looking 
for a specific shirt. Let's say I'm looking, I know in my mind I need to find my pink shirt. Mm -hmm. If I have a yellow hanger, a blue hanger, an, a red hanger, an orange hanger, my brain has to take all of that in mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm assimilating all of that information and can't find the pink shirt. But if everything is standard black, then I'm not looking at the hangers. I don't care about the hangers. My brain goes straight to the clothing. That makes a lot of sense. So I'm a big fan of one colored hanger. Whatever it is, if you wanna do plastic, great. I'm just saying make sure it's all one color. And that's kind of what we've incorporated. That's a great tip. And then we do have, of course, another valet rod. My husband uses his valet rod equally as much as I use mine. He loves to stage. And of course, he did. We did not do a pull-out pant rack for him, mm -hmm. be, just due to the size and of his closet, and he doesn't have a ton of pants like I do. So, that's kind of what you know we've worked on in his closet. I have a little bit of storage. Mm -hmm. I always save a little bit of storage because people do like to put shoe boxes. You know what? What oh, about the people with shoe boxes? Mm -hmm. Right? They don't want to get rid of them. And so I always encourage a little bit of storage. Okay. The one thing that takes a customized closet to fabulous is oftentimes crown molding. I will tell you, really? I'm not a fan. Okay. And I, it's very rare that I do it, but every once in a while someone's like, I gotta have crown. Well, then it becomes unusable. So you can't store crown on the Crown on, on the, the top. That's interesting. And if you notice, I gave an overhang on all of our closets. I did that as kind of a modern look, and I actually incorporate that in so that people can use the top shelf. I didn't realize that it was a decorative piece, honestly. Yeah. And I, interesting, okay. Yeah. That's kind of how I, I have a little bit of a shelf on everything, just yeah. to kind of give it a little bit of depth. Yeah, no, and it, now that you point it out, it makes a big difference. Yeah. It kind of gives it the, um, luxury feel <laughs> it does it does without you know with still giving me storage up above yeah because oftentimes we all store things so this so, is about function you mentioned something about um cost and it was with the pull out hampers i always thought that somebody who was going to have a a, a walk-in luxury closet was going to spend like 50 grand it just seemed like a very expensive thing to me because custom kitchens correct they're yeah. expensive right. and you're custom building this so if i've got a small space and i want to build out something like well let me take it back i don't want to build this out i know this is too big for me i want to build out half of this right what what is that what is a what's a very minimum that i can expect and what's kind of how big can it go sure Great questions. I love those because that is exactly what people call. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, I only have a reach-in closet. Yeah. And a reach-in closet can cost, if let's say you want to add a bank of drawers. I always tell everybody a bank of drawers ranges about a thousand dollars in white. Flat fronts, no decor on the drawers. And when I say decor, I mean like shaker, no shaker. It's just a flat slab front. Okay. And so we can do somewhere between 1800 and 2200 for, you know, if they wanted to do drawers in a reach-in closet. As you start getting a little bit bigger, I would say the average closet ranges around 4500 with a bank of drawers. That's not bad at all. And most people don't put lighting in because they've got, you know, puck lights or they've got can lights or, you know, whatever they've got in their closet already. And they don't want to spend the additional because I will say that lighting definitely increases can almost double the cost sometimes because lighting is so intricate mm -hmm. because we try to run everything through the panels it takes a lot longer it's just a lot more labor intensive mm -hmm. and so with that I would say you know this this closet here is probably about if I had to range about an eighteen thousand dollar closet okay uh, because of the color because of the lighting and some of the accessories that we've added but that is so not standard standard a closet is you know 4500 to you know let's say even 10k okay. that's standard okay. and then the smaller regions are 1800 to you know 3200 depending on how many banks of drawers we can squeeze in a region okay so i know um i know so classic home improvements one of our sponsors they do kitchen and bathroom remodels and i know that they'll say give me give me your needs and give me your wants and give me your budget and i will design you something that you're gonna love is that kind of how it goes with this space too? I would love to ask for a budget, but it's really funny. People are very funny about budgets in closets and garages because, okay. you know, we do garage um, garage cabinets also. So I always ask for a budget. Wait and a minute, back up. You do what now? We do garages also. Okay. Garage Good cabinets, <laughs> yes, and epoxy flooring. The three things that we do every day, uh -huh. closets, garage flooring, and cabinetry. Guess who's coming back to tell us about her garages next? <laughs> What's behind here? 
So back there is just a little bit more double hang and a long hang section. Uh, you know, the average woman has about 18 to 24 inches of long hang. Oh, and not much. I'm assessing my closet right now to think what I've got. <laughs> yes. And you know, it's like the maxi dress, the formal dress, the one time a year that you're going to use the formal dress, you know, in COVID, I haven't used anything for a long time when it comes to dresses. But you know, that's kind of where, and I even have what's called a boot butler back there. I can pull that out a little bit and show it to you. And it's a long hang form of a long hang for boots. I just peeked around the corner and I saw a couple of hooks. So we're gonna have to take some video and show you guys over here where it's super thin, but we can't fit us both back there. Right. So one more time, let's wrap up. Who are you? Where are you at? How do people get in touch with you? Perfect. I am Dana Nuesca, and I'm just gonna throw in Dana Banana because it just helps everybody <laughs> remember my name. And I own Tailored Living featuring Premier Garage. We're located in Escondido, but we serve almost all of San Diego area. You can call us 858-877-9005. We would love for you to follow us on Instagram, Tailored Living North County, or Tailored Living on Facebook North County. So, you know, that, those different ways to get in touch with us, we do a complimentary consultation, believe it or not. And that what that includes, because everybody always asks, what does it include? Mm -hmm. It includes the initial consultation where I come in and measure, discuss design, and then it includes in this day and age, we do a follow-up Zoom call and I show you the three-dimensional because we actually have 3D software. Oh, really? And it's very nice. We'll Didn't we'll know that, that either. Yes. I'd love to see what that looks like. I will show that to you. And basically what I do is I invite them into a call and then we make all the changes because your complimentary consultation includes one set of changes. Okay. And then Good at that know. point, we think, ooh, you must be ready. We get you on our schedule, get your deposit, get you on our schedule. And then... And what do deposits look like? Deposits are 10% down. Okay. And then we get you that locks in your date. The nice thing about being a niche, well, I used to say this, the nice thing about <laughs> being a niche before COVID was that we could predict when everything was going to arrive. And for the most part, we can predict still. Okay. We have a little bit of, you know, everybody's having some, you know, issues with vendors and just not having their, their stock. But for the most part, if you call and we have April 25th open, you're gonna get that date. Perfect. And that's kind of how it works. You, we don't reserve dates unless we have a deposit. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for being on the show. We appreciate it. And hopefully you'll Super have us back excited. to show off your uh, garages. Maybe you can come help me with my garage. Yes, <laughs> I would love to do that. This is what we do and it's, you know, what we've been doing. We've owned the business for seven years, so we completely know how to do it. <laughs>